Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to an amazing chemistry. What's chemistry? Chemistry, the so-called central science, deals with the structure, property, and reactivity of matter. According to American Chemical Society, the largest scientific society in the world, chemistry is for life. What we are going to address today is about this. This is the word, chemistry. What I really want to say, the short form chemistry, chem is try. And particularly today, I'm so glad to have two of my colleagues, Professor Couple Waits, Professor Wong, join me to show you some interesting chemistry experiments. By the way, we really want to remind everybody about safety. Safety is a top priority. Do not try your experiment at home or any uncontrolled experiments. Do not perform without close supervision by professional chemist. Now we'll have a brief lab tour for one of our chemistry laboratory. You see the lab bench, student workstation, and behind us, the film hood when we perform specific chemical experiments. And of course, you see the ovens, and particularly, we would like to show you things we are proud of this laboratory, the analytical balances. With the support of EMU administration, we've been so fortunate to upgrade our analytical balances and they are all brand new, work really nicely. I hope later on when you join us, you will be able to use this important scientific equipment. Now we will have the uh, demonstration ongoing. The first one, that will be from Professor Kapowitz. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Karpowitz. Uh, how do you do? Just a reminder, during this time, always be sure to wear a face mask. Right now, I'm not wearing a face mask simply so I can speak and you can hear me. So what's the experiment we're going to look at? We want to find out, is it possible to get this inside of a block of ice? Well, let's consider. So this is a pretty simple experiment. I took just got this little plastic container and filled it up with water last night and put it in the freezer and froze this. So let's get that out. I was leaving it out so it could melt a little bit so it was easier to get out of this. A little bit of a mess, but that's okay. So we know that over time, as water in the ice form heats up in a hot room, as you can see, it turns into liquid water. It melts. What I'm curious about here is, are there other ways to melt this ice than just through a high temperature? So think about this. Here I have a copper wire, if you can see that. So this copper wire I have attached to two kind of heavy blocks. They're one kilo blocks. What I want to do is simply place this copper wire on the block of ice and just wait and see what happens. Now of course over time here and so I have a timer set for one hour we'll see how much time will lapse but let's just start the timer so we can see you know legitimately how long this goes on. But what do we think might happen here? Well, of course, the ice will melt a little bit over time due to the heat of the room. But if it simply melts, the question is, if, it's, if the ice simply melts because of heat, 
the wire should stay on top of the block of ice. Make, we'll come back and see what happens, but maybe at the moment think, what do you think might happen? Where do you think this wire will be after about an hour or so has elapsed? Do you think it will still be on the top of the block of ice? Or will it have moved? We'll find out and I'll explain that uh, in about an hour or so. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Wang. So today I'm going to show you some interesting chemistry, which is a snow polymer. But the first, remember, in chemistry, the safety is the highest priority. You need to get your goggles, your lab coats, and also the gloves, because we are going to use some chemicals today. So first, you can see on this bench, we have four different items. The first one is the chemical we are going to use today and water. And I already set up a little bit of chemical from this uh, container and also a waste bucket. Remember, you need to specifically handle this chemical waste. You cannot just uh, drop them to the dumpster. Remember this. And the first thing I want to introduce is this powder. This powder is called a snow powder. And you can see the safety requirements on this tag. So you need to get the goggles, your clothes, you cannot eat them or drink them. Remember this, those are chemicals. And what will happen if I pour a little bit of this into the beaker? So they are the same thing. So I already set up here and water. So here we have, we have one liter water here just the tap water, and if we mix them, let's see what will happen. So look at this. Look at, look at the powder, look at the powder happen. The powder likes expanding, and it really like a snow. It's growing up, it's growing up, larger and larger. You can touch it, it's very cold, like a snow. If you take a close look at it, right? It's artificial snow. And uh, after five minutes, you will see the whole snow will get out of this beaker. Let's just wait a little bit to see the growing here. You can see that, right? If you take a close look at yeah. it, it's growing up, growing out from the beaker. See, oh, something dropped here. Mm -hmm. Because, the, the, oh, oh, look, yeah. it's a snowfall. Whoa. Look at this. Look at those snows. Oh, very cold, very cold, especially in the hot summer now. If you want to stay cold, get some snow in the summer, right? And also we can dump them out. And you can touch them, they are soft, cold. Remember, if you want to do this at home, protect yourself first. It's very soft, look. Touch very, you know, you can feel them. Here is the snow, you can make a snowman or make a snowball here, all right? So if you want to try in the future, you can remember this, this is called a snow powder, so which is a polymer actually. So what's the chemistry behind this artificial snow? This is because this powder is a polymer. So what is polymer? So for example, our clothes, right? Our clothes, they are polyesters. So they are polymers as well. And the fibers, they are polymers as well. So this powder is a polymer. 
So once we mix the powder with water, the polymer started to increase the water molecule into the chain, and then the polymer expanded. The polymer expanded, and the water stayed, stayed there, and you can feel them now. So the water, where the water gone, right? The water stayed into the polymer. So this is a snow polymer. And also you can see some wet or moisture here, right? All right, so enjoy it. All right. Thank you. First of all, we see they change the color. We lose the bright white. Now it seems like we get something black. Now let's cook the other one as well. like we got some gas formation and black stuff is rising and we can also guide it to where we want them to go the other one start as well This is also called carbon snake. And if you know this closely, what do we have here? We have two glassware with different diameters. Since they already raise up, what I'm going to do, we'll transfer them into the film hood. And this will reduce the toxic gas.
This is about palm and snake. All right. Okay. All right, everyone. So let's see. Well, it's only been about ten minutes or so, you know, since I started this experiment. But we can still see something that's happened. So zoom in here. What has that copper wire done? Well, on the top right here, it's still kind of there, uh, sitting on the top. But what about right at the corners? Actually, the photographer, how about he put his finger and just, is it smooth? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can feel the wires going down into it. He can't feel the wire. The wire is actually inside of the ice. It's a smooth surface of ice right there. How do, is that possible? So we started out with the idea, as I mentioned, we know that the heat of the room, the high temperature in the air can melt the ice. Well, somehow this copper wire got inside of the ice. Was the copper wire really hot? Well, no, it's the same temperature as the room. In fact, it's really cold. What actually happened was that the weight of the copper wire, the pressure being placed on the ice by the copper wire due to the force of gravity, caused the ice to melt and right where that wire was. In fact, we can get a better view of that on the other side. Look at that. Look at how, if I pull this out, look at how that melted a line into the ice. And actually, if I even try to pull the wire out, here it goes. <laughs> it worked you, for a while, yeah. <laughs> but you could see it was actually buried inside of the ice because I was able to lift it up for at least a moment. If we had given it more time than just 10 minutes, the wire would have gone even deeper in and I would have been able to lift that for uh, quite a long time. So the explanation of what happened was, again, gravity pulled down the wire and just like, and you all have experience with pressure, right? If you push down hard on something, you're putting pressure on that object. And in this case, the pressure changed the melting point of the water. That is, rather than the uh, ice melting at zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it in fact melted at a slightly higher temperature instead. And the wire passed through the ice, but then the water right above, the liquid water right above the wire was still at zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So it froze again back into solid ice. And that's why it appeared as this somehow moved through the solid ice. Technically, it does not move through the solid ice. It actually melted the ice and then the ice just froze again over the top of the wire. So these kind of experiments demonstrate that chemistry is not necessarily just chemical reactions. Of course, chem chemical reactions are exciting and are fun and we want to understand that as part of chemistry. But chemistry is also understanding the physical properties of matter. And that's what I wanted to demonstrate with this experiment. So if you want to learn more about chemical reactions and the physical states of matter, think about chemistry as a career and maybe think about coming to Eastern New Mexico University and our chemistry program to learn more about this in the future. Thank you. Thanks so much, Steven and Johan. And for everyone, I hope you like the show. And uh, thanks so much for your interest.